Different focal lengths allow you to change the perception of a shot and take the audience away from our everyday perspective into something far more unique. Hey, what's up? I'm David Aryev, and I'm a 3D motion designer and educator, and I'm gonna help you make your renders better. In this video, you'll learn how to experiment with various focal lengths until you find the one that's right for your composition, compress or expand the space within your scene, and get familiar with the various properties that come with each unique focal length, and change the perception of speed of the camera depending on your lens choice. If you want more ideas to improve your renders, make sure to grab our PDF of 10 tips in the description. Now let's get started. One of the most important decisions you can make when creating a render is what focal length you're gonna choose. When you're first starting out, often you don't even know that there's an option to try out different lenses, as it were, and so you stick with the default lens. In C4D, that's a 36 millimeter preset, which is a relatively wide lens. There's nothing wrong with that focal length or any focal length in particular, but knowing what a long, medium, or wide lens will do for your image gives you some powerful choices. For instance, here's what the shot of the flying car in our cyberpunk city looks like with a super wide and close lens. And here's what it looks like with a medium lens of about 50 millimeters. This is much closer to what the human eye sees by default. Finally, here's what it looks like with a much longer lens at about 150 millimeters. The framing is relatively the same in all of these, meaning the car is about the same size in the shot, but the perspective changes so greatly, and we either compress the space or expand it, bringing the background in close or stretching it far away. Here's another example of a shot from my Down on the Render Farm project. This is the same scene using a wide lens and then a medium, and then a long lens. These choices dramatically change the composition and the feeling of the shot. Here in C4D, it's super easy to change the focal length just by holding down the two key and right clicking and dragging. Check out the crazy perspective distortion we get when we zoom out to a super wide focal length here. In 3D motion design, sports graphics tend to opt for that much wider lens feel versus title sequences, which often opt for a longer lens feel. Though in any project with great cinematography, 3D artists will opt to use a variety of focal lengths, and often the contrast between shots on a wide lens and shots on a long lens is what creates that dynamic feel. With people's faces or characters in 3D, we also have to be aware of how different lenses can distort proportions. A wide and close lens is typically unflattering because it stretches out the proportions of the face, though for certain films like The Revenant, it's a unique look that's carried across the whole film. Long lenses are awesome for tracking shots, meaning shots that are moving horizontally against the subject, and they enhance the parallax by compressing all the space between the camera and the subject. Long lenses are also great for shots that pivot because the parallax whirls around the subject. I've used a lot of long lens orbits like these in my work. We're also used to seeing long lenses from aerial views because helicopters typically need to stay a certain safe distance away, so they use extremely long lenses to get the shots they need, and this feels very expensive to us. Though nowadays with drones, we're able to get crazy aerial views that skim buildings and subjects with a wide lens, so that perception may be changing. Finally, animating from a wide lens to a long lens or vice versa is a trick that can really bring some life to shots, as long as it's not overused. This is called a dolly zoom or a contra zoom or a zolly, and it can also be used subtly, like here in this logo resolve I did back in 2014, where I used it just before the camera settles to give the animation a bit of a boost, because if you remember, wider lenses have a feeling of moving faster when the camera is moving on the z-axis. With camera animation, wide lenses are great for skimming along objects because as we get wider, the perception of speed gets much greater, especially when moving in the z-axis. Just think about why GoPros are so popular, because they enhance the feeling of speed with that near fisheye lens. This is another example that illustrates the point so well. As we punch into longer and longer focal lengths, the speed of forward movement feels like it slows, as does the train to the left. Then finally, when we zoom out to the widest focal length, suddenly we feel like we're racing forward. For a final note, this gets back to composition to some degree, but when considering your focal length and camera angle, there are two schools of thought. The first one is to just start with building and fully fleshing out the environment, like here with my cyberpunk city where I can pretty much fly around and shoot from almost any direction and get something cool. It's kind of like building and fully fleshing out the set and then exploring it like a DP, or approaching it as a documentary filmmaker would. The second school of thought though is to just build the set to your camera angle, and often this is quicker and easier and produces a nicer composition because you're building everything to that one hero angle. The downside here though is that you can't explore and bang out a bunch of shots or renders, but if you're going for just one render, then this is often the best way to go. Take a look at this scene of mine for instance for some concert visuals I did for Zed. Here if I fly around, you'll see that none of the buildings are connected to each other, but from the front angle, everything looks correct. 
It's like the Hollywood fake walls trick. And if it looks good, it is good. So cheat as much as you can, basically. By keeping these tips in mind, you'll be well on your way to consistently creating awesome renders. If you wanna learn more ways to improve your renders, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we drop the next tip.